What's going on everybody? This is Island Hopper TV and today we are going to talk about Tulum. Things to know about visiting Tulum. Let's do it. Tulum is a tale of two different towns really here in the small metro area of Tulum. You have the hotel zone and then you have the downtown area. Both really small but two totally different vibes. The hotel zone is more jungle, tropical, uh, beach kind of environment. Out here in downtown, it's more like Miami uh, Beach, I guess you could say, or more like Hollywood Strip, I guess, because it's not on a beach. It's a mile away from the beach. So the hotels down in the downtown area are going to be a bit more affordable than they would be on the hotel zone in the beach. That's where you're going to find the six, $700 hotels, and sometimes you might get lucky and get a cabana for under $100, but out here in downtown, you can find them for a lot cheaper. You can get a bike, ride it right down there. From here, it takes about a mile. It's about a mile away. So just keep that in mind when you're trying to book your hotel. Let's talk transportation. So you're gonna be arriving on an airplane, probably into Cancun, unless you're coming from the south into Belize City, but usually most people arrive in Cancun. It's pretty far away. I mean, we're talking uh, about an hour to an hour and a half, depending on traffic to get down here. You're gonna have a shuttle or a taxi. Now, when you actually get here, depending on how you get here, you're gonna notice that the taxi cabs are gonna be a lot more expensive on the hotel zone. It seemed like every time I just got into a taxi on the hotel zone, it was a minimum of $20 US. Even if I was just getting in it for a mile, okay? So I've noticed that the hotel zone has more expensive taxis, whereas they're a little bit more affordable in the downtown area. Uh, then you have tours, so sometimes it might be better to just do a group thing with the tour and save some money. If you're trying to freelance a taxi right out of hotel zone, it's gonna be really expensive. Here's something you guys are gonna be uh, thrown off by. On the hotel zone, there's basically no cell phone data. I mean, for some reason, my Verizon cell phone data was not working. Then the Wi-Fi was a constant hassle, was a constant issue. The best way that I was getting Wi-Fi or any sort of internet connectivity, because you know some of you might have to be working because you're digital nomads, is going to a cafe. Cafes do have the Wi-Fi, but in terms of the cell phone data working in a hotel zone, good luck. Thankfully, when you get to downtown, the cell phone data does work, and the Wi-Fi is gonna be a little bit better. Uh, so just keep those in mind. I found that to be something that I was paying attention to. The main reason that I talked about a tale of two different towns is because when you're in the hotel zone, a lot of you I think you're going to stay down there because that's really where the beautiful beach is and you want to get that nice beach vibe going. It takes a couple days to really settle in and sometimes not always a couple days but maybe 24 hours because this is going to be like some people call it a magical place down there and it probably is. Uh, I don't get too big, big into all that magical stuff, but I would say it's a pretty special place and it does take at least 24 hours to kind of feel comfortable in that kind of jungle environment because it is so different from what you've likely been to. I mean, it's, it's like Bali meets Thailand here in Mexico. It's kind of like one of those kind of vibes. see this question asked often, is Tulum safe? Yes, it is. I would have to say it is safe. The most dangerous thing I've done here in Tulum is go out in the heat for an extensive amount of time without drinking water. Also, another thing that I would say was pretty dangerous was trying to pedal a bike up and down Tulum's uh, hotel zone road. Right there, it does get uh, a bit crazy, especially with some of these shuttles coming in and the taxis. Even though they have speed bumps, which are actually kind of crazy to ride your bike over, uh, people do speed down there. And I mean, they'll be going, they'll be hauling, and they got one car going in the other direction. That, you know, it's two cars in one direction. Here you are a bike with something on the side, and uh, it gets a little bit crazy. That's the most dangerous thing I did. As far as petty crime and theft, there are some things that you need to worry about, like uh, spiked drinks maybe, you know, depending on where you're getting your stuff. Uh, your drinks it's definitely stay away from hard drugs when you're down here because that's when you're asking for trouble but for the most part yes tulum is safe this here is something that can be really annoying it's sargassum seaweed 
It's the seaweed that comes in from the Caribbean because remember we're on the Caribbean. That's why we get these Gatorade colored waters out here. But the sargassum every morning comes ashore. Some areas get it worse than others. This whole time we've been here in March, we've seen lots of sargassum. You'll see people in the morning, workers using rakes and shovels, shoveling the beach, getting rid of that annoying seaweed. Even when you're swimming, you'll feel it while you're swimming come up against your leg. You'll be like, I hope that wasn't a fish. Well, it turns out it's just a piece of seaweed. And it's all in there. It's not that bad. I mean, swimming in the ocean is pretty good, but there are some concerns with going out too far because of strong currents. It's not the best place to swim, uh, but it is a good place to get in, you know, up to your shoulders, uh, up to your waist, just get in the water, get wet, maybe take a dive in. Also at night, when you're walking the beach, guess what? There's gonna be security up and down there uh, you're not necessarily allowed to walk the beach at after hours at night because each hotel on the beach has security and they're going to shine a spotlight on you. Sometimes you can get away with it depending on how charming you are, but don't really bank on being able to walk the beautiful beach uh, up and down during the night hours. Maybe outside of your hotel, but not going up and down across many hotels uh, front front ends there. Tulum is a great place to go shopping. The thing is, they don't have any chains. No Walmarts, no anything that's franchise, okay? So everything you're gonna see is going to be mom and pop, local, just how you like it. Organic, real, right? So the shopping you're gonna get down here, whether you need a pair of glasses, a new hat, it's all gonna be mom and pop type stuff, which is actually pretty good. Even if you just get a shirt that you wear for the time you're down in Mexico, you're gonna find that here. Uh, tequila, all these different things you can shop for in many of these stores. Look at these beach hats, you got beach blankets, you got beach bags, they've even got bikinis, boutiques. There is some uh, Westerners, Europeans who set up shops, Italians and whatnot, who've actually set up boutiques uh, that you can get more of the designer stuff. So plenty of shopping in Tulum. I mean, it's actually a thing you're going to do when you're down here. Oh, and one more thing about shopping, Bohemian is really popular down here. Down here in Tulum, in the Yucatan, it is a true jungle. They will tell you when you arrive, welcome to the jungle. They are not kidding. This is a legitimate mangrove jungle and all that jazz. So when you get down here, make sure you drink plenty of water because the heat will catch up. It will catch up with you. It will hit you like a ton of bricks, sometimes you'll start feeling lightheaded just out of nowhere because the heat and the humidity just kind of sucks the life right out of you, especially at like three, four o'clock in the afternoon. It just happens. So make sure you drink a lot of water when you wake up and afternoon, try to drink some water. Another way to get hydrated is eating uh, fresh fruits and vegetables, cucumbers or citrus, something with an additional vitamin in it to help you hydrate. Uh, also, when it comes to knowing how to dress, uh, wearing long sleeve rash guards, or maybe you ladies out there or some of you guys will want to have a sarong with you just to kind of cover up from the sun because it is uh, pretty hot and humid down here. Many people have been asking, is Tulum expensive? Yes, in the hotel zone. Not so much out in the actual downtown area. But Tulum overall, compared to Playa del Carmen, some of the areas across Mexico, it actually is more expensive. So when it comes to the hotels, be ready to pay top dollar for uh, hotels down here. When it comes to getting the food, it's not too bad, although there is an upcharge. I mean, you can expect to pay 10 to $15 for a breakfast. That's gonna include a coffee and maybe a drink, but. I would have to say, yes, Tulum is kind of expensive compared to the rest of Mexico. Yeah, so out here in Tulum, you're gonna notice that the food is very fresh. They don't freeze the food uh, like they do in the States. Also very organic. You'll notice that here uh, across Tulum. I love the ceviche. I always get the ceviche. Even the chorizo and huevos was really good. I mean, it all tastes very fresh chilaquiles, whatever you like down here, it's going to be high quality, fresh. They say dirt to plate or fork to uh, 
farm to fork, whatever they call that. <laughs> they say that out here on some of these signs, so pretty good. Hola. For the most part, Tulum is a jungle environment, not a party place. If you guys want to party, go to Cancun, hotel zone up there. Go to Playa del Carmen, that's where the party's at. Maybe a little bit in Cozumel, but Tulum, this is more of a nature paradise. This is more of a natural experience. With that being said, there are nightclubs that do get going. It's just they're really expensive. And when it comes to accessing the beach along the hotel zone, it's going to be a little bit of a challenge for you sometimes because you have to go through those beach clubs and there's not a lot of beach access. You have to go through one of the beach clubs. So just keep that in mind. It's more of a natural kind of experience really in Tulum. Now with that being said, you're gonna have a lot of new age yoga people who are coming down here to do some healing, do some personal work, or just do some meditation, relaxing. And that's really common out here. That's why it's not so much a party place because you have people thinking and healing and doing these different things down here in Tulum. Now there is an interesting dynamic between the people and the locals. And I found that to be kind of unique because you have the Mayan people and then you have these new age people who come down. A lot of them are from Europe. Not even so many Americans come down here. It's a lot of Europeans coming from Italy and other parts, even Argentina down here. And so I, I noticed a stark contrast between the Mayan people and then the uh, people who are coming from out of state or out of the country to Tulum. It's an interesting dynamic. It takes some getting used to and understanding, but they do go pretty well together. All right, so when you come down here, you're gonna have lots of activities that are gonna present themselves to you. San, uh, Sion Khan. You're gonna have the cenotes all over the place. Lots of activities, the archeological sites. Uh, Tulum has the ruins. We went up to Coba. There's Chichen Itza not too far beyond Coba. And there's a lot to see and do out here. If you wanna do Bacalar a little bit further south, you're gonna have a full itinerary in, in a week. You couldn't even do it all. How about that? That's gonna include your relaxing and your fun time that you're gonna to wanna to do, right? That being said, the stars are really bright at night. Get a chance to go out onto the beach at night, whether you have, I know it's not so easy to walk the beach, but get a chance to look at all the stars around 10, 10 p.m., maybe 1 p.m., 1 a.m. That's when the stars are really at their best. And man, you could see why the Tulum archeological site was a observatory. Really special to see the stars from Tulum. That being said, thanks to everyone who watched this video. Watch some of these other videos. I'll put links right here. Watch our Mexico playlist if you love coming to Mexico like I do. We'll see you on the next one.